Hello everybody, my name is Brian Stewart. I'm a co-founder of Electrify Now. Today we're going to be talking about the benefits of electrification and how all of us can take part in helping to accelerate the transition of our energy systems to a clean renewables for a sustainable future. I'd like to start really high level because most people don't really have a very good idea about where carbon emissions come from, even though they sort of understand that man-made carbon emissions are overheating the earth. Where do these emissions come from? And if we don't know where they come from, it's hard to know what all of us can do about uh, reducing them. So let's start with global carbon emissions. This is a picture for the United States, but most countries are similar. All industrialized nations are very similar and agricultural nations are only slightly different. The truth is that over 80% of our carbon emissions um, are come from burning fossil fuels for energy, specifically for electricity, for transportation, and for heat. Of course, some come from agriculture, and in some nations that might be slightly higher than here in the United States, but in general, agriculture and other industrial processes are less than 20% of the total carbon emissions that man makes every year and contributes to global warming. The same picture uh, holds true at the household level. For most of us, about 60% of the emissions that we're responsible for come from the energy we purchase. Think of it as your electricity bill, the gasoline you buy to put in your car, the natural gas you use to heat your home. 60% comes from those sources. Of course, there's energy associated with the stuff we buy and the food we eat. And if we really, really work hard at trying to reduce our emissions from those two places, we can buy less often, buy fewer things, try to buy our food locally, buy organics and regeneratively grown um, agricultural products. That will reduce these two boxes on the right somewhat. But this 60%, the big blue box, it's entirely possible for all of us to make that go to zero. We have done that in our home. We've helped hundreds of people across the United States do the same. It's part of the electrification movement, and we have information on our website to help you to figure out how to do that. The reason why energy is such a problem is that as we burn coal and natural gas for electricity, we use gasoline and diesel to fuel our cars and trucks, which are the major sources of transportation uh, carbon emissions. And we heat our homes and buildings and it, some of our industrial processes like making steel, etc., use natural gas and to some degree propane. I want to spend a little extra focus on natural gas because there's so much misinformation about it. The truth is that natural gas is similar and some people say worse than coal in terms of its complete uh, carbon impact and life cycle uh, climate impacts because of the leakage that happens throughout the system. It's a major source of air pollution. Somehow natural gas doesn't get associated with air pollution the way automobiles do, but it's a major source of uh, ozone and smog in our cities today. And renewable natural gas, although it's getting a lot of hype from the gas industry, is not a solution that's going to save the day. The reason is because there's nowhere near enough sources of this re so-called renewable natural gas to ever come close to meeting our needs. The most uh, conservative or most uh, optimistic forecast is that there's enough for 15% of our typical current gas usage, and there's no more sources available. These are sources such as municipal waste dumps, uh, CAFO feedlots, etc., And it's two to five times more expensive than fossil gas. So the idea that we're gonna heat our homes with renewable natural gas is nothing more than a greenwashing marketing ploy from the gas industry that all of us should be very skeptical about. So the bad news is that we have to stop burning fossil fuels. The amazingly opt optimistic part of this story, though, is that wind and solar are now the lowest sources of new energy generation. This is because the prices of solar panels and wind turbines have been plummeting over the last two decades, and now you see that they are the cheapest way to make new energy, and forecasts are that prices will continue to drop on these technologies, while, as you already are seeing, there's upward pressure on the costs of gas and other forms of fossil fuel, partly because of um, natural gas, sorry, uh, carbon emissions um, policy, but also just because of the limited availability of those materials. So this is fantastic news. The other good news is that battery storage, which is another really critical uh, component to a clean energy future, the prices there are plummeting along similar price curves and are projected to fall even further, which is why 
Automobile manufacturers estimate that it will be the same cost to manufacture an EV as a gas burning car within a few years. This is also an essential technology for renewable energy for our electric grid because storage will be a critical component. When you couple that with this other piece of good news that electric appliances are become dramatically more energy efficient over the last few decades, it, there's even more reason for, to be excited about electrification. The LED light bulb is the poster child for this. It uses 10 times less energy than the incandescent light bulb. But this is true of everything that we have in our homes and in the world that uses electricity, our refrigerators, our computers. Everything is sipping electricity now that was guzzling it just years ago. And then on top of that, the electric grid, for reasons that we just discussed, is getting cleaner literally every day as more renewables are used to replace coal and gas uh, fired generation. So when you couple all of these things together, low cost renewables, high efficiency electric appliances, a cleaner grid all the time, it's impossible to ignore the uh, inevitable outcome that we should be thinking of electrifying everything. And this is a concept that you will hear um, these words more and more, and it is referring to a future where the wind and the sun power all of our primary energy needs. We use it for generating electricity, we then use that electricity for transportation for our cars and trucks, and we use that to heat our homes and buildings and for industrial processes. This comes with amazing side benefits, cleaner air. Where does air pollution come from? For the most part, it comes from burning fossil fuels. We'll get more available and cleaner water, no using it for fracking, no using it for firing uh, coal powered and gas powered gas uh, electric plants, which takes unbelievable amounts of water. Fossil fuels industry is a huge consumer of water. We'll get better jobs. We'll have a stronger economy. Every piece of research on the green uh, energy revolution shows that it leads to a stronger economy with better jobs, higher paying jobs, safer jobs, and a more resilient economy. We'll have also equal access to energy. We see how important this is with what's going on with Ukraine right now, where you see how one country that has an abundance of fossil fuels at its disposal can wreak havoc with its neighbor, neighbors by using that money to fuel uh, aggression and leverage control over their neighbors. So that's all amazing good news, but we can't ignore the stark reality that every single device that burns fossil fuels must be replaced with clean energy alternative before 2050. Think of every device across the whole planet. This is a little bit daunting because obviously there's thousands of coal and gas power plants. There's literally millions or even tens or hundreds of millions of cars and trucks that need to be replaced. There's millions of gas furnaces and water heaters and boilers in our homes, in our buildings, and in industry. All these things will need to be retired in the 30 years we have before 2050 where we need to get to net zero emissions to create a planet that will be inhabitable. This can be daunting, but on the other hand, in that span of time, all these devices that are currently in operation will be retired because they will either break, their end of service will come due, and it will be an opportunity to replace those things with clean energy alternatives. But we cannot afford to miss any opportunity we have to replace something that naturally retires, that burns fossil fuels with a clean energy alternative. We have amazingly potent solutions that are right here today. They're ready to scale, they're cost effective, and they eliminate carbon, not just reduce it. Wind and solar, which we talked about, every time a gas plant needs to be retired, we need to replace it with wind and solar. Electric vehicles to replace all our gas burning ones. And that's true whether it, as a homeowner, you're looking at a new car for yourself or for delivery vans, interstate trucking, electric vehicles massively uh, outperform gas powered vehicles in every way and when charged with the renewable energy produce zero emissions. And we can use electric heat pumps to heat our homes and cool our homes also and our commercial buildings and our factories. These devices are here, they're incredibly effective. The problem is that they are not near at the scale they need to be. Wind and solar is only 12% of current energy generation. Electric vehicles are less than 1% of the cars on the road. Electric heat pumps are about 10% of the heating solutions here in the United States. This is why all of us can help to accelerate adoption of these new technologies, 
that have been proven, they're not really new. They've been here for decades, but they are ready to scale now. And by us adopting them, we can accelerate them to scale and make them the new normal and help solve the climate problem. This is because renewable energy and electrification, when combined, are step change reductions in emissions, not just gradual reductions. They eliminate emissions when they're used in conjunction. The easiest way to understand this is in our own homes. A typical home here in Oregon, and it's not that different across the United States, will produce about three to five tons of emissions every year just from the electricity that we consume. One car will produce four to eight tons. One gas furnace, about the same. And a gas water heater will produce one to three tons every year just from the fuel that it uses um, to produce the water we need. If we do the very best we can to conserve energy, turn the lights off when we're not using them, or eliminate those power strips that sip electricity, get a gas car that gets the highest mileage possible, drive less, drive slower, get a gas furnace that's the most efficient, turn down your thermostat, take cold showers, all these things, if the, we are diligent about them, we can reduce the amount of fossil fuels that we consume at most 20%, which is great, but it's nowhere near what we need. We need to get these to zero. And you can see how when we combine renewable energy plus electrification, that becomes possible. Renewable electricity is entirely accessible for everyone in the United States through green power plans, through community solar, through putting solar panels on a roof. Some of these things will save you money in addition to getting 100% carbon free electricity. Then use that electricity to charge your EV. And instead of four to eight tons per year, you're producing zero emissions. Use that renewable electricity to uh, power your heat pump and eliminate the gas furnace and reduce your emissions by another four to eight tons. Eliminate gas powered water heaters and replace them with heat pumps, another one to three tons that goes to zero. So you can see how when you combine these things in a home that typically would produce 20 to 30 tons of carbon emissions every year will go to zero when you combine renewable energy and electrification. And that same house will save money on utility bills by about $1,000 per year because a typical home spends nearly $4,000, in some cases more than that, uh, if you have two cars, uh, just for the energy that you consume, and that will go down to more like $3,000 with these steps that we just articulated on the slide before. This is why it's so easy to get excited about renewable energy and electrification. We will have homes that are safer and more comfortable and buildings, commercial buildings, the same. And we'll be using our energy dollars on the solution rather than continuing to use our $4,000 a year, our energy spending to fund climate change. At Electrify Now, we try to make this really simple so people can take these actions. We talk about in forms of four steps. Clean up your electric supply. Make sure you have clean energy coming into your home. We can show you how to do that. Go to our website, electrifynow.net, to find out how to do that. Electrify your home. Get rid of anything you have in your home that burns fossil fuels, but especially your furnace and your water heater, your stove and your gas fireplace insert, for sure. All your lawn tools that burn gas. Get rid of all that stuff. Replace it with electric alternatives that work better, require less maintenance, are cleaner and safer to use. Electrify your ride. Get rid of your gas car when it's time and replace it with an EV or an electric motorcycle or an electric bike. And then we need to remember that there are many people who will struggle to make this transition. There are capital costs that are required for these things. Some of them, us are well able to do that. Others will really struggle. So we need policy and philanthropy to bring everyone along in this journey, not just those who can most readily afford it. That's the Electrify Now story. We urge you to go to electrifynow.net to find out more information about this. Our contact information is there. We'd love to help people with figuring out how to do this in their own lives. Please check out our information and good luck with all of your electrification projects. Thank you.